Okay, the first thing you want to do when you arrive is head over to aircraft registration. This is where you'll pay for your camping and you can get your passes for the day. And if you're not an EAA member, which we were not, you can go ahead and join that here as well. So you don't have to already be an EAA member prior to arrival. And then what you do is you pay the entire time for your camping and then if you leave early for any reason you can have after hours camper refund on the ticket there's a form you fill out for the date that you're leaving and they'll reimburse you it's probably a good way for that to work out that way you know people who say well i'm only going to be here three days and then they're going to stay four days and then they have to come back and pay again this way you're paid all in full and then if you stay you stay and if you leave early you get a refund and so it works out pretty good that way so it's convenient. This one's for the North 40. As you see, there are planes everywhere. Now, prior to walking over to registration, be sure to note which road you're on. We are on row 509. Uh, if you arrive early, sometimes the line guys that park you don't have the little form, and they will fill that ticket out for you to take and, and put the road number and the aircraft type and all on it. But uh, if you get here early, like I said, then just make sure you remember which road number you're on. We didn't know that. And so we had to walk back and figure out what road number we were on. But fortunately, because we were here so early, it was not that far of a walk because our plane is here and registration is So here's your registration receipt, and that's what you'll place uh, either around the prop, around your tent pole, or in the windshield of the aircraft. And it's $36 a day, three-day minimum, and they will refund you any day that you uh, leave early, only after the first three days. So this is the refund ticket on the other side. And that's what you either put in that lockbox if you leave, if nobody's there, or you can just go back up to the registration booth and they will get you your refund. So anyway, uh, relatively simple. We'll just put this up here. And that way they know you're good to go. They do have little guys and gals running around on scooters coming around checking, make sure everybody's got the registration uh, forms filled out and in their window or on your prop blade or on your tent people put them various different places And we just hung a big garbage bag off of the tie-down hooks on the other side of our camping location It's just a good place to keep your trash Another little thing we did after we set up we pulled the stakes up on the tent and as you see we slid the awning of the tent underneath the wing if you got a high wing that works pretty good that way if it does rain the water will come off and just roll off the side then we'll have like a little uh we'll have like a little patio area <laughs> we can walk in and get to the tent so anyway that, that that's going to work out pretty good now too as well so they pass out these green tags if you need fuel and you just tell them what you want and how much you want and they'll come by with a fuel truck and top you off. Janice and I topped off about 50 miles south of here before we came in just so we'd have plenty of fuel to get back on, but that's another option. All right, we made it to Oshkosh. And one of the concerns was tie downs. We've seen several different kinds of big claws and we've seen the little corkscrew type. Then I came across this, the big screw easy tie down. Now you talk about heavy duty, that's a one inch cast aluminum screw. Now you say, how are you gonna get that puppy into the ground? Well, let me show you.
That plane ain't going nowhere with that in the ground. The one inch straps uh, are rated at 4,000 pounds braking strength and feature double S hooks for secure fastening and a cast steel chrome plated hook to fasten to the pull down strap as well as a tie down hook on a ramp. Instead of the ratcheting type mechanism it has just a cam lock which prevents you from just balling up the strap going around a ratcheting type device. That is slick. You like that huh? Yes sir. That's awesome. I asked a lot of people about those things. From the, the fork screws to yeah. the big well, wall. that's the fork screw and it's not. <laughs> Look at that little camera. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is this is Greg. He is actually uh the big screw guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't want to say this it. is what we call service. The and, guy that, that manufactures and sells these things comes out and designs them and installs them for you. <laughs> we, well, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the show, I do customer service. Yeah, I yeah. don't come out here to sell screws. I do customer service, but my customers are my best salespeople. So how's that work out? Pretty well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So right, right. So here, right here, this is the best screw on earth. Right here. That's it. That's, That's it. it. And we had it, and he actually kind of helped us. We had it just right down here, almost straight out. And he suggested we put it a little bit forward because we won't uh, twist. Correct. If we get into some heavy loads. Keep, keep your plane safe. Yeah. So anyway. I'm going to take a little slack out of that. Yeah, because I did some research and kind of, and I like these from an engineering oh, yeah, standpoint. Too. I went, ooh, I kind of like these. And then I went, okay. So I called him up and said, hey, I, you, know, you got some of those puppies I want one. There you go. So we'll do one there. Come back the other way. Make it pretty. And you're all set. Thank, cool, you, thank you for being a customer. Sure. Okay, so it's Saturday. The show hasn't even started, but Ron and I feel like we have done a lot. We've walked, what, about... 15 miles a well, day. 15 miles every day so far. <laughs> but I um, kind of wanted to show you what our camp kind of looks like. We have a couple of just very inexpensive chairs. We have our ice chest. Ice chest serves as a table, footrest, whatever you might need. And I've utilized, we've got a couple of backpacks and there's one I use every day. Make sure we carry, you know, water bottles with us that we can fill up. I actually have a little Kind of like a little mini first aid kit with some band-aids and stuff in there because you never know when you're going to get a blister or something. And we carry one of the big batteries and use it. Well, let's lost it down in here and use it to make sure we can always, you know, keep our phones and uh, this little camera charged. So anyway, that works out really well. We kind of take turns carrying that. Ron got the tie downs the new what are they called they call the, the the big screw easy big screws easy big screw tie downs which are working fabulous we have every day set up our solar panels this is a little jackery brand so anyway and there's our little generator see I have a battery hooked up to it the little DeWalt battery we use that for our DeWalt fan and for the the uh, impact rig that Ron used to put in the tie downs. Well, fan, it's just a mess. I kind of threw out all of our clothes are laid out there. We also have a backpack I use just for the bathhouse, and it kind of, I keep our toothbrushes and stuff in that. The only thing, we have a nice size tent to get up, and like I said, we've got junk thrown all over everything. It's kind of a bad time to show you, but we do have a queen size air mattress. We were able to blow it up with the uh, solar solar generator. But anyway, we um, have that. We have room on each side of it, you can see. There are a couple of things that we really that we really like like having. One of them are, you know, headlights. I know everybody pretty much has these. Ours are rechargeable, so they're pretty nice to have. We have a couple of them. I think we just ended up bringing one. The other thing is, you'll see up here, 
These are some rechargeable lanterns. We have two of them. They have some different settings on them. And we, we tried them out at home. They lasted like 14 hours on the high setting. And so that was just fabulous to have kind of a little ambient light at night. But anyway, you can kind of see what it's like here. People are spaced out pretty well. It's been, it's been really nice it, at night. By about 10 o'clock, it quiets down, and people are kind of very considerate of each other. So we've met some wonderful people that are camping all just right around us. So, so far, so good. One of the first things you'll need to do when you arrive is locate the nearest Red One Market. There are several of them scattered all over. It's basically a small convenience store, and one of the necessities is to get a bag of ice and any other little things you may have uh, forgotten to bring along the way. Okay, so getting groceries. This is a pick and save. Um, it's affiliated with the Kroger brand. Really nice store. I would, I would say this would be the place to come get groceries. And the nice thing is, is there's a shuttle that runs down to the Target right down there. And um, it will drop you off and it's real convenient then just to walk down here to the pick and save. That's our choice for getting groceries. The North 40 Cafe was one of our go-to spots. They had really great pizza and amazing donuts. Just east of the North 40 Cafe are public bathrooms and shower houses, and these are cleaned multiple times during the day. So this is a quick overview of the North 40 where we were camped out. Here's our spot location right here. And this is the westernmost bathhouse. Next was the North 40 Cafe, which was kind of our go-to place to eat. And this is the Red One Market, where we typically get our ice from, as well as some other incidentals. And then the Eastern Moor Bathhouse is located here. And this is registration. So that way you kind of get an idea of the layout uh, in the North 40 for everything. Well, good morning from Oshkosh. Good morning. Slept pretty good last night. It did get cold. We actually had to put socks on. I know. It was, it was a little chilly last night. <laughs> so anyway, but it, uh, it, it worked out real well. We uh, have our caffeine. I have my Diet Coke. Janice has her coffee. I made the trek down to the little store, which is a little bit of a trek, but yeah. you know, hey. Yeah, it's not too bad. Planes were coming in at 6.30 this morning. So anyway, uh, it's open for business. Gonna eat a little breakfast. I got my peanut butter and crackers. Chase has a energy bar of some kind. So anyway, we'll uh, keep y'all posted. So anyway, love you guys. Uh, hope uh, we get to meet up with some of y'all when y'all, some of the rest of the pilot friends get up this way as well. Overall, we felt we were pretty well prepared for camping. The one thing we weren't prepared for was the extremely cool temps. We didn't even bring any long pants. Everyone told us about the warm weather, so we even brought a fan. But we needed another blanket or possibly a sleeping bag and some pants. If you do go with a queen size air mattress, be sure to get a tent with at least a 10 by 10 footprint. Remember the sides of the tent angle in as they go up. In the description below, we'll also include a list of all the items that we found helpful. Ron and I are not campers, and we had a great time. We stayed eight nights, so we hope that we can inspire you if you're on the fence about the whole camping at Osh deal. Maybe you'll be our camping neighbors next year.